In 2017, the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center, commonly known as IC3, classified business email compromise, BEC schemes, as the number one crime from the point of view of volume of financial losses to victims. In 2018, the FBI sent out an alert warning that BEC scams led to losses of billions of dollars in the last five years. That happened to be the year the FBI commenced investigation into Obinwane Okeke. In 2019, the FBI called BEC the $26 billion scam. That happened to be the year Obinwane Okeke was arrested. In 2020, the FBI warned that cyber criminals are conducting business email compromise through the exploitation of two popular cloud-based email services, costing U.S. businesses more than $2 billion between January 2014 and October 2019. The FBI knows this because it has been tracking BEC scams since 2013. Courtesy of such tracking, it also knows that BEC scams, which can also be called email account compromise scams, have been reported in all 50 US states and in 177 countries. In 2021, the FBI successfully prosecuted Okeke and got the American court system to sentence him to 10 years in prison. August the 2nd, 2021, makes two years since his arrest. Why did he have to spend a decade behind bars? Just how dangerous are BEC scams? What lessons can Nigerian lawyers, law enforcement, the Nigerian government, and even Nigerian youths learn from how it all went down? Stay tuned. In its June 2016 issue, Forbes cover picture was that of none other than that of an African named Obinwane Okeke, age 28, nationality Nigerian. His rags to riches inside story included in the article titled Africa's Most Promising Entrepreneur, Forbes Africa's 30 Under 30 for 2016. Barely a year later, May 2017, Invictus Group of Companies Limited, one of his companies, a total of 14 of them, 10 at home, two in Zambia, one each in Botswana and South Africa, won Africa's Most Innovative Investment Company of the Year 2017 award from Africa Brand Congress at the Africa Brand Leadership Merit Award held in Lagos, Nigeria. Just four months later, meaning September 2017, Okike was nominated finalist for the 7th All-Africa Business Leaders Award organized by AABLA in partnership with Consumer News and Business Channel Africa, CNBC Africa category, Young Business Leader of the Year, West Africa.
Come 2018, Veronique Edward of the BBC interviewed OKK Live in London for her show Focus on Africa, streaming the same on BBC Africa Facebook page April 26, 2018. But Forbes was not yet done with him. The journal got back to him two years reckoning from 2016, spotlighting OKK in its shortlist of Forbes 100 Most Influential Young Africans of the Year 2018. End of the flight, August the 2nd, 2019. How come Marshall Ward, FBI special agent, crashes Okeke's plane, swearing to an affidavit in support of a criminal complaint against the flying magnet to requisition for an arrest warrant when the success guy was supposed to be boarding a literal flight this time around destination home? away from the U.S. in just a matter of days, August 6, 2019, to be specific. And overnight, August 7, 2019, the warrant was successfully executed and returned. Same day, a federal public defender was appointed for him, and he was remanded in the custody of U.S. Marshal Service pending the next hearing. Preliminary detention hearing before Magistrate Judge Theresa Carroll Buchanan, earlier scheduled for 2 p.m. on August 9, 2019, in the Alexandria Courtroom 500, was rescheduled to August 12, 2019, before Magistrate Judge Michael S. Nachman Oppen, when, for some reason, it didn't quite happen. That notwithstanding, the prosecution secured a temporary detention order. Okeke's third appearance came about August 12, 2019, before Magistrate Judge Michael S. Nachmanofin in the Alexandra Courtroom 400. But Okeke had reason to contest neither his detention nor his prospective trial, and so was left with no choice but to sheepishly submit to custody in anticipation of an appearance before a grand jury. And a John Obiora Iweanoge would be appearing for him. And so, June 18, 2020, four years from June 2016, 
the flying star heard himself pleading guilty to a two-count charge of conspiracy to commit computer fraud in violation of Title 18, United States Code Section 1030, and conspiracy to commit wire fraud in violation of Title 18, United States Code Section 1349. Both contain in the statements of facts filed in court for and on behalf of none other than the eminent and celebrated success, Mr. Obinwane Okeke. Sentencing was originally scheduled for October 22, 2020. It was inexplicably adjourned to February 16, 2021. On that date, Senior U.S. District Judge Rebecca Beach Smith gave Obinwane Okeke 10 years for his crime and also ordered that he pay restitution to the tune of 10.7 million U.S. dollars. Obinwane Okeke, business magnet, born in Upo village, Anambra state of Nigeria, some 565 kilometers from Abuja, the federal capital territory. November 9, 1987, 17th child of a fourth wife with a roving childhood, ever shortly between teacher trader mother and dispersed relatives during school vacations, boarded at 10. Orphan of a dad at 16, holder of a first degree in international studies and forensic criminology from Monash, South Africa, and a second degree in international relations and counterterrorism with distinction from Monash University, Australia. A prolific public lecturer, including TEDx Talks, plus one to a distinguished audience at London School of Economics LSE Africa Summit in 2018. Owner Track Holding Limited, the Export Sales Office of Caterpillar Heavy Industrial and Farm Equipment, headquartered in the United Kingdom, reported to the FBI in June 2018 that it fell victim to Open One Okeke's business email compromise, BEC scheme, climaxing in fraudulent wire transfers amounting to as good as 11 million US dollars. A review of the documentation provided by UNATRAC representatives took the FBI a whole month, followed by the commencement of investigations in July 2018. Thereabouts, April 1, 2018, Owner Track's Chief Financial Officer, CFO for short, was sent a phishing email that masqueraded as a legitimate email from Microsoft Office 365. It was a flawless reproduction of the original. Unfortunately, the CFO fell for the social engineering trick and he clicked on the link, was redirected to the spoofed web page attempted to log in and passed on his account username and password to the brains behind the fabrication.
If the EU got an access to both account username and password, the CFOs of this 365 account became canon folder for the intruder who went on to access the same no less than 464 times, primarily from Nigerian internet protocol addresses between April 6, 2018 and April 20, 2018, as the intruder ransacked emails and digital files at random with a view to coming into information to enable him make a killing. Courtesy of total control over the CFO's account, the intruder one assumed the CFO's identity to send dishonest wire transfer requests to members of Onatrack's internal financial team. Two, biot up the believability of the attached Google's invoices to the email requests. Three, stole Onatrack's logos and pre-formatted invoice templates from the CFO's commandeered account to provide an air of authenticity. Four, in cognizance of the fact invoices come from external parties, prepared emails from fabricated external email addresses, then send them to the CFO's account before forwarding them to the financial team with his control of the CFO's account as if the CFO had done so himself. Sometime on April 19, 2018, the intruder sent an email with a fake invoice from parkfay.trade at gmail.com to the CFO's account. Some 120 seconds later, the intruder sent the same email to a member of their financial team. Between April 10, 2018 and April 17, 2018, the period of the CFO's account takeover, the intruder either created or modified email filter rules a total of seven times. The idea behind the creation or modification of those rules was to keep the CFO in the dark that his account had been hijacked by denying the CFO access to the replies sent by recipients of the intruders made up emails, as well as diverting genuine emails sent to or sent by members of the financial team, marking them as read and storing them away in a folder other than the inbox. The social engineering trick succeeded. Between April 11, 2018 and April 19, 2018, members of Onatrack's financial team acted on the fabricated emails, processing around 15 sham payments, sometimes in the same account more than once. For example, the financial staff received and processed three invoices to Parkfay Trade Limited valued at 278,470 
point six six dollars eight hundred and ninety eight thousand four hundred and sixty one point seventeen dollars and one million nine hundred and fifty seven thousand one hundred dollars in total nearly eleven million dollars was sent all of which went to overseas accounts when the lead blew open it was too late to reverse the transactions or recover the funds Following the takeover of the CFO's Microsoft Office 365 account, the intruder pillaged the CFO's OneDrive online file storage, viewing no less than 13 of his digital files, mainly those dealing with his tax records and travel schedule. And in an act that proved to be his undoing, downloaded and emailed one of those files which contained part of the company's standard terms and conditions to his email address, iconoclast1960 at gmail.com. Who is queries for econoclass1960 at gmail.com show it as a registrant for several internet domains, including emmalindustries.com, which happens to be an intentional misspelling of the domain emmalindustries.com, which is likely a legitimate email domain of ASM International Trading Dubai UAE, an international financial portfolio company that could logically have business relationships with OwnerTrack. It is a common tactic of subjects who send phishing emails to incorporate one or two intentionally misspelled characters in the hope that the email recipients would not notice and assume that they are communicating with their clients or other legitimate business partners rather than an unknown third party. Who is queries on info at mrlindustries.com was linked to five additional domains. Redacted domain one, redacted domain two, redacted domain three, redacted domain four, redacted domain five. Redacted person one of Yorktown, Virginia was named as a registrant for all five of these Names. Redacted person once said he had nothing to do with the iconoclast. 1960 at gmail.com and that he has never registered an internet domain and that he was unaware that anyone had used his identity to do so. Econoclast1960 at gmail.com was implicated in another email phishing scheme, according to an FBI confidential source who the FBI has absolute confidence in 
due to his job function and role as a high level architect at a software security firm, his access to raw malware reporting data, and the fact that FBI agents have had a chance to observe him at work, irrespective of the fact that his engagements with the FBI had spanned less than a year as at the time of this investigation. FBI's confidential source was also of the opinion that it was well now impossible for a Kono class 1960 at gmail.com to be a legitimate account that was being hijacked from its legitimate owner by a malicious actor to perpetuate fraud as a non-legitimate activity on the account would have raised eyebrows and caused the legitimate account owner to reach out to law enforcement. This position was further solidified by the fact that FBI database searches had previously implicated the account in phishing activity. Another FBI field office had prior to the current investigation come to the realization that a class 1960 at gmail.com was also involved in the registration of counterfeit domains for phishing purposes and that a Nigerian provider of domain registration services had transacted domain registration business leading to the provider sending a class 1960 at gmail.com invoice payment confirmation emails no less than twice between February 5, 2016 and June 21, 2018. Some four months after the case was reported, and three months and a few days after commencing investigations, on November 7, 2018, the FBI obtained official records from Google pertaining to the account econoclast 1960 at gmail.com in response to a federal search warrant 418SW65 issued in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia. The returns from Google responsive to the FBI's first federal search warrants pertaining to this investigation highlighted that econoclass1960 at gmail.com was a major player in fraud, computer break-ins, trading in compromised credentials, setting up fraudulent wire transfer conspiracies such as the heists against Unatrack in April 2018 and another swindle against the Red Wing Shoe Company of Red Wing, Minnesota, of $108,475.55 around about January 9, 2018. And this was independently confirmed by representatives of Red Wing. The Google returns also included extensive emails and chat messaging with probable co conspirators about designing and hosting phishing web pages to enable further identity theft scams. Other emails in the Google return contained lists of over 600 captured email account passwords and personally identifiable information like scans of passports and driver's licenses. Returns of chat messages in the econoclass1960 at gmail.com account revealed that the operator of that account did not act alone. His several co-conspirators included the person behind redacted email 1, as evidenced by chat messages exchanged between December 2017 and November 2018, that discussed the particulars of setting up phishing pages to enable identity theft. In the course of these discussions, econoclass1960 at gmail.com directed redacted email one to design phishing web pages to his specifications to ensure they looked 
and functioned as closely as possible to their legitimate counterparts. On January 8, 2018, redacted email one and econoclass1960 at gmail.com sent each other emails which contained code for setting up phishing web pages in a bid to demonstrate and test their efficacy. The econoclass1960 at gmail.com account was host to hundreds of emails that can be traced to the script that resulted from those conversations given that they contained stolen login details and concluded with redacted line one. Recall that the FBI obtained its first federal search warrant from the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia on November 7, 2018. The Google returns in response indicated that among the stolen credentials were passwords of accounts belonging to victims located within the Eastern District of Virginia such as January 17, 2018 emails, which included passwords belonging to victims located in Mechanicsville, Virginia, and another email dated January 18, 2018, which had a Richmond, Virginia victim's password, and also an email dated February 26, 2018, which also held a password belonging to an Ashburn, Virginia victim. On the basis of the above, the FBI special agent concluded that because the capture of these passwords was facilitated by wire communications affecting interstate commerce between the Eastern District of Virginia and locations outside Virginia, there is probable cause to believe that these emails violated Title 18, United States Code, Section 1030A6 on password trafficking. In addition to conspiratorial conversations, fraudulent web page code, compromised credentials, the returns received from Google also reveal the true identity of the owner of econoclass1960 at gmail.com and indicated that alibabaobi at gmail.com was its listed recovery email and also linked several other accounts to econoclass1960 at gmail.com via login session cookies, including notably obin1name at gmail.com. Open source intelligence on being one name at gmail.com linked it to the online forum hosted by Neverland and to a Neverland user named Invictus Obi, who had listed being one name at gmail.com as his contact address. The Neverland.com profile page for Invictus Obi linked it to the Twitter username at Invictus Obi. The Twitter page for at Invictus to be identified the user as Obin Wanne Okeke in Abuja, Nigeria. Obin Wanne Okeke associated him with a company called Invictus Group. The Twitter page also claimed that he maintained an Instagram page with the same username Invictus Obi. Both the Twitter and Instagram pages led to the conclusion that both the Twitter and Instagram pages appear to be a true identity and contain posts as recent as July 2019. To put this in context, it should be recalled 
that this affidavit was filed on August the 2nd, 2019. Okeke's Instagram page found numerous posts indicating that he travels extensively throughout the world. On March 31, 2018, Okeke posted to Instagram claiming that he was in Seychelles. Google records for March 31, 2018 indicated that there was a login to the EconoClass1960 at Gmail account from an IP address 197.158.125.89, which is located in Seychelles. On April 20, 2018, Okeke stated that he was in England. Google records for April 20, 2018 also showed a login to the EconoClass1960 at gmail.com account from an IP address 167.98.28.227 in London, England. Between June 25 and 27, 2018, Okike claimed that he was in Washington, D.C. Google's returns also reported a login to the EconoClass1960 at gmail.com account from IP address 68.33.78.173 located in Washington, D.C. Open source intelligence on Okeke's Instagram page uncovered a post dated July 12, 2018, where Okeke claimed to be in hospital recovering from surgery. That post contained a picture of Okeke lying in a hospital bed with the text, thank God for seeing the surgery through and making it a successful one. Marshall Ward, FBI Special Agent, then searched for the term hospital in the chat messages contained in the Econoclast 1960 at gmail.com account from records provided by Google and found a conversation which appeared to reference Okeke's hospital visit. Yet other chat messages with Econoclast 1960 at gmail.com indicate that others often referred to him in his true name or nickname Obi, Chief Obi, or Obi Wanne, confirming for a certainty that Econoclass1960 at gmail.com is none other than Okeke. Further confirmation that Econoclass1960 at gmail.com is none other than Victus Obi is that official records from Google. For EconoClass1960 at gmail.com email content included the term in Victus OB twice. Additionally, content in closed source records, that is pictures in his email, were posted in open source records, that is pictures in his Instagram account and on the same date. There is also the fact that there Picture posted on the Instagram account originated from Econoclast1960 at gmail.com. By correlating closed source and open source records, the FBI succeeded in connecting three email accounts to Okeke. On February 27, 2016, Econoclast1960 at gmail.com account sent an email to alibabaob at gmail.com which was a recovery email of econoclass1960 at gmail.com. On March 4, 2016, econoclass1960 at gmail.com 
forwarded the February 27, 2016 email above to InvictusOB at iCloud.com. The attachments to both emails corroborated the FBI's findings that the person running all three accounts was involved in identity thefts and credit card fraud. Let us review the case so far. The case was reported to the FBI around June 2018. Investigations by the FBI commenced around July 2018. The first federal search warrant for a teenage W65 for official records from Google pertaining to the account conoclass1960 at gmail.com was sought for and obtained by the FBI on November 7, 2018. Some four months after the case was reported, and three months and a few days after commencing investigations. Having completed a review of those records, new leads turned up, and these needed to be explored as well. And so, some five months and a few days after commencing investigations, and one month and two weeks after the first federal search warrant was obtained, the FBI once again approached the court for this time around, not one the two search warrants. The second federal search warrant for 18 SW81 for official records from Google for the accounts redacted email one, alibabaob at gmail.com and obin one name at gmail.com was served on the company December 21, 2018. The third federal search warrant for 18 SW83 for official records from Apple for the account in victuzub at icloud.com was served on the company on the same date. The FBI's review of the returns indicates the accounts alibabaob at gmail.com, opium one name at gmail.com, and in victuzub at icloud.com are all used in true name by Okeke. An analysis of redacted email one records one of the three email accounts in the second federal search warrant confirmed the account's involvement in the fraudulent scheme as evidenced by multiple discussions about setting up phishing web pages and to please victims of money dishonestly. Google's returns uh, also tied the operator of redacted email one through session cookies to several dozen email accounts implicated in other FBI investigation of fraud reports such as redacted email or Having completed a review of the returns for redacted email one, alibabaob at gmail.com, obin one name at gmail.com, and invictusob at icloud.com, more leads turned up. So once again, to stay on the right side of the law, some 11 months after the case was reported, and 10 months after the FBI commenced investigations, six months and eight days after returns responsive to the first federal search warrant were received, Four months and 24 days after returns responsive to the second and third federal search warrants were received, it became necessary to serve a fourth federal search warrant for 19 SW74 on May 19, 2019, for official records from Google for redacted email 4. A fifth federal search warrant for 19 SW77 on the same date for official records from Google for redacted email 5, and a sixth federal search warrant for 19SW79 on the same date for official records from Google for redacted email 6.
Some 26 days later, on June 10, 2019, Google's returns indicated that redacted email 4 was active, that the account was implicated in thousands of fraudulent home repair schemes, and that there was one merchant in Hampton, Virginia, who was defrauded in 2015 of $11,570. Official records from Google pertaining to the account econoclass1960 at gmail.com also indicated that the operator of econoclass1960 at gmail.com interacted with several other co-conspiratorial accounts, including redacted email 5 and redacted email 6, given that both redacted email accounts appeared to be the most significantly involved, the FBI came to the determination that they had to conduct an in-depth investigation into those accounts. Some of the findings from the Google return on redacted email 5, which was received on June 10, 2019, may be summarized as follows. Redacted email 5 was active. Redacted email 5 was linked to redacted phone number 1. Redacted email 5 was also linked to several other email accounts, including Redacted email 7 via session cookies. Redacted email 5 and econoclass1960 at gmail.com had extensive discussions. The communication between redacted email 5 and econoclass1960 at gmail.com involved trafficking in stolen or compromised accounts and passwords. The victim spread across five US states. The communication between them also zeroed in on certain accounts and specific individuals, such as the October 15, 2018 email sent by redacted email 5 to econoclass1960 at gmail.com over an upcoming real estate transaction valued at $585,000 that suggested a man in the middle attack to relay the outstanding balance of $526,000. And the December 13, 2018 chat conversations between redacted email 5 and econoclass1960 at gmail.com, which identified a third co conspirator named Kelvin. FBI immigration database record searches indicated that redacted phone number one and redacted email seven were both used by redacted person two, a Nigerian citizen, on a visa application for entry into the United States dated November 20, 2018. OKK and redacted person two both traveled to the United States on March 10, 2019. The FBI also received on June 10, 2019, official records from Google for redacted email 6 in response to a sixth federal search warrant, 419HW79. The findings from that return may be summarized as follows. Redacted email 6 was active. Redacted email 6 was linked to redacted phone number 2. Redacted email 6 and econoclass1960 at gmail.com had extensive discussions. The communication between redacted email 6 and econoclass1960 at gmail.com involved trafficking in stolen or compromised accounts and passwords and attachments, 
and included copies of likely stolen passports. The communication between them also zeroed in on certain accounts and specific individuals to target, such as the September 14, 2017 email sent by redacted email 6 to econoclass1960 at gmail.com, which listed a victim's compromised email account and password, and that also named a second user's email account, who he claimed approves transfers, and the name of an employee at the potential victim firm whom redacted email 6 suggested was probably their accountant. For reasons earlier stated, the affidavit submitted that probable cause exists that Obinwa Neokike has participated in violations of Title 18, United States Code, Sections 1030 and 1349. The results of the investigation were unambiguous that Okeke had conspired with several persons, including redacted person 2, and redacted person three to carry out computer fraud and organize fraudulent wire transfers. The affidavit then provided his date of birth, passport number and nationality, as well as the number of times he visits the United States yearly before indicating his next departure date would be August 6, 2019 and requesting that the court authorize an arrest warrant to guarantee his apprehension before his departure from the U.S. complicates the process of law enforcement getting hold of him. In part two of this presentation, we will conduct a technical review of how the FBI came to the conclusion that Okeke had conspired with several individuals to access computers without authorization and used such access to cause the fraudulent wire transfers with the help of open source intelligence and the lessons to be learned from that.